advanced accounting one, intercompany indebtedness. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, email and phone number. Our source for this video was advanced accounting, the text from McGraw-Hill. And if you want to find out more about bond accounting, you can find out about it in our intermediate accounting three through six videos. I talk about at the beginning of my security classes. There's two ways, two ways to run, raise money, debt or equity, and that's the beginning of our discussion about finance. We're talking here specifically about debt. And let's assume that there's two entities of a company, A and B. Entity A issues debt to a third party and receives cash. We've talked about those basic transactions in intermediate accounting three through six. You issue debt, a bond payable, you get cash. But the twist here is, is that a different entity, part of the same company, Entity B, goes out and buys A's debt from a third party. So Entity B goes out and buys Entity A's debt. Entity B did it to earn interest and also to be repaid principal at maturity. So on Entity B's books, the A's debt is simply an investment. So on their balance sheet, they would have an investment in Entity A. So the question is, when we combine these financials, when we consolidate A and B, how do we treat that debt that was purchased from one entity within the same organization? And we say at the bottom, in the last bullet point, the bonds are treated as if they are retired. And if you haven't seen that term before, retired debt, retired retire bonds are those that are paid off and no longer owned by the public. I flipped over to Excel here. The heading is bonds acquired by a non-affiliate. And we have a company, Sparrow, that buys the debt of Eagle Corporation. Sparrow and Eagle are, are affiliates of the same company. That's what I have in italics right here. And we use the term constructive requirement, retirement, which says when we consolidate the books, the bonds are treated as if they are retired. So we have some journal entries here, some of which you've seen before. The first one is Eagle Debt issuing a bond. We have cash in the door, we have a bond payable, and we issued the bond at a discount, which was something less than the face amount, the par amount. And that amount was $77,000. And we did this on January 1st. We have to amortize that discount. So our issuer, Eagle, has to take the bond discount and amortize it. And since it's a 20-year bond, if I take the $77,000 divided by 20, I see the amortization, which is an expense to Eagle, is going to be another $38.50 a year. On June 1st of 06, several years later, we calculate the amortization. And what we come up with on a straight line basis is of, that of the 77,000, about 28% of it is amortized as of 6106. 72% is not. The reason that we brought the amortization up to date as of June 1st of 06 is that's the same date that Sparrow an affiliate of the same company, goes out and buys an investment in Eagle. But the twist here is, is that they pay a different price and have a different amortization amount than the price at issuance when Eagle issued the debt up here. So they have an investment in Eagle bond and for the $50,000 face amount. They pay cash of $43,000. And the difference to make the journal entry balance is $7,000 discount on bond, which for the investor eagle becomes income. And that's why I put down here an example journal entry. We're going to take this credit and gradually debit it each year. And we're going to move that discount into income on eagle's books. Now here's the difference. The annual discount amortization for $50,000 or 10% of the original issue for Eagle is $385. Sparrow's income, 
which is the discount of 7,000 7, divided by the 14 and a half years they own the bond is $483. The point being that Eagle's expense for issuing at a discount does not match Sparrow's income from buying at a discount, and that's the point I wanted to make. Flipping back to PowerPoint, constructive retirement. We're going to have a gain or loss when we consolidate the income statement and show both entity A and B. And as I just pointed out in Excel, the debtor Eagle is going to have a carrying value. They issued the bond at a discount. And that is going to be different from the affiliate Sparrow's purchase price of which they purchased the bond at a discount. So I expand on that in this bullet point and say the original issue price from Eagle and the purchase price by Sparrow, Sparrow differ. And the reason they differ is, is because the price of the bond changes with market conditions. And as a result, we're going to have a gain or a loss. So let's flip back to Excel. If I go to my consolidation worksheet, what I see in the balance sheet section, if I combine Ego, Eagle and Sparrow, the two affiliates, Sparrow is going to have an investment in Eagle debt and a bond discount that's going to be gradually moved into income. On the liability side, Eagle is going to have a bond payable, and they're going to amortize the discount into expense. So we have to make adjustments to take that information off the books. So on a consolidated basis, we have no balance. Because on a consolidated basis, we have to remove it. Since they're both, Eagle and Sparrow are the affiliates of the same company. The income statement. Annually, and I want to keep my heading, Sparrow is going to earn 12% on $50,000. They're going to have income, so it's a credit. Of six thousand dollars and Eagle the issuer is going to have a debit an interest expense of six thousand dollars so those are going to net out and here's our gain or loss on constructive receipt to make all these entries balance so then in consolidation we have a zero balance we have to come up with a credit of fourteen hundred and eighteen dollars and that represents the premium less the discount that we talked about in Excel. And to show you it on an annual basis, here is Sparrow's amortization of the discount that goes into income. It's a credit. Here is Eagle's amortization of the discount when they issue, which is a debit and expense, and we have a difference of $98. That's the end of Advanced Accounting 1. You can see our complete three-hour course through GoToMeeting.com, Essential Topics in Management Accounting. Here's our YouTube channel, Kemboid STL, all one word, where you can find the videos. For individual tutoring and live chat sessions, here's our website, our email address, and our phone number. And you saw on the first slide that we are also on Skype. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.